Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I have something from Wilson and Morgan. Haven't seen them in a while, have you? It's an independent bottler from Italy, Wilson and uh, Morgan Barrel Selection. Distilled 2014, bottled 2021, single malt scotch whiskey, a product of the Glen Alachi Distilleries. Yay! All right, so the, first of all, the color is beautiful. It's not that dark syrup Coca-Cola moment. It's actually a red from the Madeira. And we have whiskey base number 181557. And we have a price of, I paid 48. I can find it online now for 44. And I can find it online for 60. Now, there are a few tiny little mysteries that I cannot really um, comprehend yet. First of all, there are 789 bottles, no problem. But then it says it's the casks 54 dash, which means through to 57. Four, five, six, seven. That's four casks. Uh, sherry cask, I'm sorry, sherry, Madeira cask usually um, would give us about 500 bottles per cask. At, especially at 46%, and especially at an age of mm, six some years. So there should be at least 2,000 bottles. So where are they? Are they still maturing? Did they only do a partial gorging of these casks? I don't know. Maybe someone at Wilson and uh, Morgan knows. Someone maybe knows that is smarter than I am. All right, I want to read the back of the label because it says something interesting here, and I'm going to talk about why it's so interesting. This expression from a young but always interesting and unique Speyside distillery, well, okay, Glen Anarchy is not that young. It's about the same age as I am, all right, is one of the very few entirely matured in Madeira casks. This is a first fill Madeira maturation entirely. And if you don't believe me, it says so here. And if I turn up the bottle upside down, it says so here as well. I have no idea why they put that upside down there. All right, so um, who knows, who knows. All right, so it continues to mention the following. Obviously, the overall character is extremely whiny. So W-I-N, all right? So wine, the Madeira wine, beautiful wine. Um, with a substantial, uh, stimulating, I'm sorry, stimulating sour note and the typical oxidated and nutty aromas. So just like a sherry, just like an Oroloso sherry, you have an oxidation, you put in the wood, you don't let that uh, flor, the, the yeast layer create, so you actually have interaction with the air and the, the wine oxidates, and they want to have a nutty type of flavor, yeah? So it has that... Um, very, very good. It's extremely mouth-watering uh, with a sharp but warm character. Oh, with salty and yeasty notes. I did get the yeasty, but I did not get the salty. Enjoyable by itself, but particularly stunning when paired with aged cheese. One of these whiskeys that defy boundaries and all the more unique because of it. 46%. So what am I going to do? I'm going to pull out the cheese. What do you mean? It's food pairing time. I have here, I have here middle-aged Gouda, Gouda, G-O-D-U-A from the Netherlands. And I'm actually going to have a little piece of this and try my whiskey with it. I think this is the very, very first time I've done this in a German or an English video. In my German videos, I have done some food pairings. I've had some people on my show that actually have guided me through different food pairings and so on. And it's been very, very interesting. It's not something I do a lot, but that is going to be the question of the day is what do you normally pair your whiskey whiskey with? Is there anything? So I love pairing whiskey with chocolate. I love pairing whiskey with some cracker or some bread or some cheese. I love um, having whiskey maybe even with like a um, a little bit of a um, roast beef and things like that. So um, those are things I like. I have a little bit of a sweet tooth. So I know people that love ice cream and whiskey. Um, what is your favorite food pairing and what type of whiskeys would you pair with what type of things? Now, one of the things I do is I do not pair my whiskeys. Usually, I have, for example, um, the, uh, the, the cheese, I have my Ritz crackers, and I have some good port wine. 
beautiful, beautiful moment for me. All right, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this box. It does say that since 1992, independently whiskey, sorry, independent whiskey bottler William and um, William Wilson and Morgan have been offering a rare selection of finest Scottish whiskies to connoisseurs all over the world. So I'm going to get rid of this, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the cheese in the middle, and I'm going to pull out something um, from Glen Allachie. This is 48%, this is 46%, this is 12 years old, this is 8 years old. Um, this is an exclusive bottle for Germany, and it's a Madeira wood finish. Now it is a few years old. Um, what happened here is I do bottle shares, and one person did not pick up their or did not pay for their last five CL little share there. And um, I was too lazy, too busy, too uninterested in it to actually um, interact with that person. And so I'm just going to fill it up, put on my sample list, and someone else can get it here um, in due time. So what Billy Walker did when he bought the distillery um, is he took all those bourbon barrels he had and re-racked them. Re-racked them means he puts them in wood, in different wood sorts. I've seen a lot of port. I've seen a lot of Rioja wine. I've seen, I've seen Pedro Jimenez. I've seen Oroloso. I haven't seen much rum, by the way. Um, I have seen some other stuff out there, and he's also used Madeira. So the biggest problem is he basically had a whiskey that was 10 years in old distillery wood. So old wood that was second, third, maybe in fourth fill. Um, and he actually just put that in to the good stuff. And it didn't, it tries to mask that old wood flavor. In my personal opinion, it didn't work here. So I personally have an aversion every time I see exclusive to Germany. Why? Because often that's what they kind of get rid of. All right, it's not big enough a release for travel retail. It's not big enough a release for maybe Scotland or the world. It's maybe a little bit too big for a small country like maybe Romania or Hungary or maybe even, I don't know, um, Portugal. But it's big enough for Germany and they send over a couple thousand bottles of this and send maybe a thousand or nine hundred and send it out. And everyone's ex at, at the beginning is very excited until I or someone else does a review and go, ooh, it's not good. And then often it just sits in the shelves for a while, unless other people don't watch my reviews and they buy it anyways. Tough luck. So what do I am doing? I'm helping you to hopefully find value in whiskey there. My problem is it's usually for people in Germany and Europe and for everyone else in the world. These are rare and exotic whiskeys. You probably won't find any place else. So sorry. All right. So first thing that I recognize here is the color. You do notice a color difference here. Um, this is very, very light in comparison to this. This is not a dark, um, a dark Coca-Cola moment. This is actually a red honey type of moment. Um, a little bit actually of more, almost like a wine moment going on here, going into the orange. I love this nose. I'm getting a cascade, ooh, big word, a cascade of Madeira. Have you ever tried Madeira? There's all different types. Just like there's all different types of red wines and white wines and cherry wines and other types of and rums and so on. The same thing happens with Madeira. They all can come from that one island of Madeira. And they usually have these very, very big um, casks. And they let that sit at the highest level in the room or in the storage facility, let's say that word. And they hope for a lot of evaporation to make it actually into a great thing. And then we use those casks. Later on, also here for our whiskey, I am very certain that there are seasoned Madeira casks out there, and I would not be surprised if this was one of them from 2014. Now, usually Wilson and Morgan are a somewhat higher price exclusive type of whiskey. They do have some fairly um, affordable things with their barrel selection. I often overlook the brand because um, many times, more than not, um, there'll be 200 plus euros, the things that they have. Some of them are excellent, some of them are not, and I'm not really in the position to buy a whole lot of these and try them. They're often scooped up very fast, and um, yeah, they do win a lot of awards, uh, Wilson and Morgan. They do have some excellent stuff out there. It's always trying to find that needle in the haystack. And with Wilson and Morgan, sometimes I have, and more times than not, I found them to be average, but well 
out of my normal budget for whiskey. Trying to say this as politely as correctly. But this really, I, oh, 48 euros. Oh, first fill Madeira, full maturation. Glen Arachi, what could go wrong? It's 46%, 48, 50. Cast strength would have been much better. But hey, you can't have everything at that price. And I love the nose. Excellent, excellent. Very, very, very whiny. The Madeira is there. On here, the 12 year old, the finish from Billy Walker. I'm getting a soapy type of moment. I'm getting a little bit like a. Imagine you, um, you had a lot of daisies, um, and they were in that vase for too long. Yeah, it could be the old bottle effect that it's been in the bottle for about a year now, and it has oxidated or whatever. It hasn't done much good to it. But it's I, I the very first time I tried it, I didn't like it either. So, um, but I did use this as my calibration whiskey, which I tried beforehand, and then it was like, oh, there's Madeira in there. Then I went over here. I was like, oh, there's Madeira. <laughs> this is good. This is really nice. All right, so I'm going to try this. I'm going to try the this. I'm going to go back to the cheese. I'm going to try this again. I'm going to tell you what happens. All right, Salancho to your health. Got a great mouthfeel. It is non-chilled filtered, no color added. It's oily. It's fruity. There's a lot of Madeira, Madeira, but it smells a little bit better than it tastes. Why? Because the Glen Anarchy, um spirit is coming through. What do I mean? For me, I've had 25, 30 different Glen Anarchy bottlings so far. It could have been more. And almost always. Now, the 15-year-old and the new 10 batch and so on have been so transformed by Billy Walker. I don't get it anymore. But the younger stuff, um, I do. It has the mineral moment in there with a um, grapefruit acidity. It's a little bit like a chalky mineral moment with grapefruit added. Typical um, old school Glen Arachy. Now, this has all that going on there and a lot of the Madeira on top of it. I tried to describe it in my um, first video in German about this. It was like fresh new leather smeared with strawberries that are not yet 100% ripe. They're not green, but they're not that luscious falling apart in your mouth type of strawberry. They're very hard, but they're, you like, you, when you go out in the field and you pick them, you pick them a little, like, a couple days too early or maybe three or whatever, that's what I'm talking about here. So they're pink, they're almost red, and then you, you just, as you, if you rub it in the leather, that's what you're getting here. I like it. It's good. This is actually a B minus whiskey. Very, very nice. The whole time, I'm kind of asking myself, what would this be like if they, instead of the Glen Arachy, had you used a cask from Glen Fittich or Glen Nivet or some other spirit that is very fine? Um, Deanston has also quality about it that I can often pick up. Aaron has a quality about it that I can often pick up. For me, it's not as delicate as many other people say, but um, Glen Arachy is not delicate. It has a little bit of a of a punch that goes with it. All right. Now, what really, really surprised me was um, the whiskey doesn't change with the cheese. The cheese changes with whiskey. <clears throat> so apparently, um, my Cheese here is not the oldest. I can buy stuff that's um, almost a year old. Don't have it in the house, so I just went for that middle-aged uh, gouda here. Um, and I'm going to eat this. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to go over the whiskey. Mm -hmm. Baseline. Mm hmm. Not bad. The the whiskey takes a little bit of a turn more towards that mineral moment. But wait for it. I'm now going to eat the cheese still with a little bit of that alcohol presence in my mouth. Mmm. And the cheese pops. 
The cheese has much more of an aroma, has much more flavor, has much more of a, a depth and complexity that I didn't have before. So I remember I was doing my other video in German. It was like, all right, my whiskey didn't change. What's going on here? Let's take a little bit of cheese. I'm like, wow, the cheese is much better. It really shocked me. I wasn't expecting that. So I'm going to change the, um, the bottle here. So um, it actually has a little bit of a type on it. It says enjoyable by itself, but particularly stunning when paired when um, aged cheese here. Um, I don't know if you can see this or not. Okay, we have the aged cheese and we have the um, when paired when aged cheese. It should be with. And so, um, yeah, the, the cheese is stunning afterwards. Well done, well done, Wilson and Morgan. Like it. All right, now over here, my um, Glenn Alachy, that 12 year old. Oh, I'm going to give this back, by the way, a C, a C plus actually here for value for money. I like it. I have not had very many 48 euro whiskeys that have been fearfully matured in a Madeira cask or Madeira cask. It's, uh, even the nose isn't nice here. And I get a lot of that bitter tannin wood as if there were um, second, third, and fourth fill casks used in this. Billy Walker tried, there, was, oh, there we have the Madeira a little bit. Billy Walker tried to mask the, t the, the, the flavor of those original, um, the juice. Not enough. So sorry. Uh, the longer he's there, the better the products have become. All right. So all he's put out, everything up until now. Um, 2021 has been all juice that he himself with his team has not distilled. It's all been stuff he's transformed. And as soon as they have their own whiskey made all by themselves, we're going to hear about it. I promise you that. And they're going to announce it and they're going to celebrate it. And they're going to make sure that the whole world experiences it as well. Um, but this is still one of those older things there. All right. Thank you very much. So don't forget to write down in the comments and read the comments of others and comment on the comments of others. What is one of your favorite food pairings with whiskey? What do you love to drink and eat your whiskey with? Um, cheese, bread, chocolate, crackers, beef stroganoff, whatever it could be. All right. Thank you very much. Like, subscribe, tell others. And Whiskey Jason here. All the best. See you soon. Bye-bye.